Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Today we're going to draw a person holding some sort of heavy object overhead. If you have all your pencils all set, let us draw some framework. We have explored this particular uh, pose uh, before, but uh, we are doing this from a completely different perspective. So. That is what the human body is all about. Uh, different placement, posture, so sharp curve in this case required. The lower torso pretty much getting crunched right there. And the legs will, so they'll be foreshortening here because we're showing this like uh, not just a person standing and doing this but in some sort of like moment so there's the thigh if you would like to check out our other videos on, on anatomy we have uh, several with action poses so actually let's move the thigh up here and make sure that it comes into the angle of the camera and there is our foot <clears throat> so coming forward and going a little back at the same time so we're looking at it from that sort of a dynamic perspective and this like here going all the way back you can also google images i'm pretty sure that we'll find uh, holding an object overhead <coughs> excuse me images should be there but So thigh, knee, lower leg and foot. So the curvature is like this. And depending on what we are trying to base the image on, and uh, if it is a character, if it is a person, we of course will add dimensions and details accordingly but right now let's just finish up the framework so one hand nice and prominent so flat of the hand right there so upper arm and forearm and here let's position this hand more like outward like all out all out and forearm and flat of hand going inward case now overhead we could put really anything here I would put in a huge part of a bottom of the crate here like this so it would go up here like this but that could work and then the head this is the dynamic thing in this tilted like that And there are a few options that we can work with. And that is the, <coughs> excuse me, fun part. Always. So right now, let's get the stable elements out of the way. And we have the hand positioned right there. Thumb essentially on the side fingers showing like that or I mean with the slightest movement of the angle so I made the thumb a little less chunkier there and this hand uh, now there can be two different positions so this first position let's just draw this guy in back like that shoulder going right into the head there collar structure right there that's our chest serratus and ab structure right there if we need it and then of course we have the thigh so we could do like a ring uh, technique here if you want depending on how what kind of foreshortening we want to present and then we have the 
chin and calf going a little backward. So quite dynamic actually this uh, type of positioning and then we can go like we're imagining that like going backward yet and ending up with the knee right there and foot right there this foot is actually a little too big it's almost the size that's not correct foot will just be that that much and this is not there sorry <clears throat> And this hand now, in this case, the position is pretty much going to be somewhat like that. And if you can see a hint of these fingers, we will probably see a hint of the fingers just that much, like very little. And of course the head, we can leave it right here behind this forearm. And even in this position, we can do two different things with it. One can be giving it a dimension like that, provided, I mean, it is, you'll, we'll have to, of course, change the shape along, like the flat will come here. If, if is looking down. So looking down, ear will come here. But <clears throat> if you leave the head right where it is, without like changing a thing, and just have him looking up. It also works. So either way makes for a fairly uh, uh, dynamic position in either way. And of course we have other options. Other option means that we can bring this leg into closer view do a shin and calf right there and have the foot placed somewhere there it would also work but not as dynamic as that that is like like really awesome and this leg can of course also be changed further but it would not be realistic like this is like realistic here like you know it looks like the balance is the sorry the the weight is coming down and then the person is like trying to balance it on his um, arms and probably is going to land up on his uh, shoulders but essentially lifting with the hands here so not with the back the positioning of the hands will give them more crunched as soon as the back comes in. We have an Atlas holding up the world video in which we have shown that kind of more crunching position where the weight of the earth is on the back of the character and that was also an exercise in actually uh, uh, showing uh, that perspective of carrying the weight on the back. Now if we have uh, Let's actually put some, uh, what should I give this guy? So let's say that this is like a Herculean type of um, deity. And there we have the Greek gear. So let's give him a little bulk there because now he is entered into the, the Greek deity category. And that category means that it has to look like an atlas <clears throat> and more so like feel like an atlas. But here we have some details thrown in just for kicks. And if we have in this pose now there's the the main rule is that there's that huge thing overhead and of course all the tone will fall on the body accordingly and there'll be a lot of tone going but 
let us just ink the character here and see how it looks. So just inking the knee right there, putting in some tones for the for the shin and the calf. Shadow on the foot. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are either, well, actually they used to have slippers, I just remembered, but okay. It's alright. We can make do with shoes. Shows a little advancement there, and they're safer to work with when we're working with uh, heavy structures that we have to lift overhead. So, makes more sense to have a pair of shoes. There. Inks falling in around the face. elbow and arm right there in place and of course we can throw in additional tones if you want right there depending on what the person is like wearing there again the tones will set in heavily in all areas pretty much under that weight but that's one quick way of getting around it and let's see if we were to even put in like tones to the object here we could and the thing that we we can get away with inking while doing semi detailed portraits illustrations like these is that we can break certain rules for instance the hands are fairly lit even though the person is lifting this huge object overhead and necessarily we didn't have not tapped into a light source that is coming like from here or or from any particular direction we just elevated like downward we just made the light source come down but that's okay for now and there we have it quickly put in person lifting heavy object overhead and what one of the options that we can work with right here one of the ways we can make use of a particular character illustration so <clears throat> thank you for watching please do subscribe keep in touch we put our content pretty much every day so let us keep sharing ideas have yourself a wonderful day